17, she is still tied to mom's apron strings, never leaves the house and still sees things. Everyone thinks she's a, she's kind of special. She always told crazy stories, and when we were younger, she sometimes got me in trouble by telling our parents the most bizarre things about what she saw. She lied a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I was always innocent, and she had to try to drag me into it. Dad told me one day when she told him about an evil, evil spirit in her room, Jackie would come down for breakfast in the morning with the scratches on her back and face. She'd murmur to herself, and we could hear things like, nasty demon. Mom was upset and took her to the doctors, who said that she was doing it to herself and was sewing, showing signs of schizophrenia. Frenia, Frenia. One time, Dad found bird beaks that were still dripping blood, scattered and left in strange places around the house. They were stuffed under cushions inside coffee cups and poking out of the air vents. He followed the trail of tiny feathers and drops of blood all the way back to Jackie's room. He went nuts that day. Do you hear that, guys? It's a little girl screaming. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> I remember having, I remember hearing mom and dad fight over what to do about Jackie. They sat her down and asked her about the beaks. She shook her head violently, chirping like a bird and screeching until they got the medicine down her throat. We were all so terrified of her. I kept my door locked at all times. When I started having nightmares and passing out every time something happened, Jackie was always standing there staring at me with her pale green eyes. Her messy orange hair always creeped me out, but when she took the scissors to it and did a freaky hack job, I wondered if I'd be next. Next. Mom was worried that I was going insane too, but when I turned 18, I decided to move out with my boyfriend. I'll never forget the last day. When I was packing up my bags and boxes, Jackie sidled up to me and handed me an envelope. She giggled and backed away as I opened it up. I froze. There were pictures and she'd drawn of me scratching her face and torturing animals. I looked up in confusion and saw her pointing at me with an evil grin. You're the one, Denise. You are the demon. You came to me at night in your sleep. I didn't want to believe it even though I did have problems with sleepwalking when I was little. She whispered in my ears as I fought back the tears and disgust. Keep bringing me the baby birds, Denise. I like the crunch. If you don't, I'll tell and you'll be taken away. I try to keep her happy, but now my boyfriend wakes up with scratches all over him. That was whack, but that's okay. We gonna, we gonna find another one. <laughs> I need some scary, scary stories. Let's see. Okay, let's find another one. It's called A Terrifying Secret in the Shed. My best friend, Sha Sasha, Sasha, my best friend, Sasha, committed suicide five years ago. At 27, she was an identical twin to Sarah. Even though we'd never been that close, Sarah and I soon gravitated towards each other in order to cope. We formed an even closer bond than the one I had with Sasha, which has made me feel a little guilty at times. Still, her parents were very grateful. Still, her parents were very grateful for our new friendship, which helped with the grieving process. One thing that has become a nagging issue, though, to this day, Sarah still doesn't like talking about Sasha and does not like to see any photos or videos of her twin. At first, I assumed it was the grief. I soon discovered how temperamental she could be. When her mother asked if I could help sort through Sasha's stuff, sort through Sasha's stuff, <laughs> Sarah was annoyed and went on for four weekends. Each week was harder and harder. Not only did I have to deal with this resurgence of grief, I had Sarah in my face. Every Friday night, I had to fend off Sarah's alcohol, feud, phone calls, and threats of never speaking to me again. It wasn't until the fourth weekend when I discovered why she was so hostile. It was while I screwed through a final box. Inside, there was a large bag filled with bundles of letters. Sarah's mom left the room, so I took the opportunity to check them out. They were all addressed to Sarah from Sasha. My blood ran cold when I opened one of them up. The writing was scrawled and erratic. It was a threat telling Sarah that it was time to go. Puzzled, I began checking the other letters. They were all the same, threatening Sarah to end it all as there was only room for in the family for one daughter. Becoming ill, I was 
rushing over to him and picking him up, I looked back to the bed but couldn't see anything wrong. I kissed Stephen and asked, What happened, sweetie? He looked up with me he looked up at me with the tears in his eyes and shook his head. He finally said in a tiny voice, The girl with the jumpy face. I pressed for more, but he wouldn't elaborate. We let him sleep with us that night, but we talked him into sleeping in his own bed the next night with the lights on. The lights. The lights. The lights. It was just after midnight again. Stephen screamed and called for us. We both got up and went down to his room. Before we got there, my husband put his hand out to stop me. As Stephen continued to scream, my blood froze. In front of Stephen closed door was a little girl crouching down like she was preparing to leap at us. She was dirty and her hair was matted, but the most disturbing thing about her was her zigzagging features. Her face was like a turbo earthquake. Even creepier it was the strange rattling sound coming from her throat. Something from the straight something straight from the worst ghost stories. My husband yelled, get away from him. She growled and turned around and leapt to the closed door. Like a ghost walking through walls, she disappeared. My husband rushed at the door and tried to open it. Tried to open it. Tried to open it. Tried to open it. To open it. He pushed and wrestled with the door while Stephen screamed, Mommy, Daddy, she's coming to get me. My instincts kicked up a notch as I rushed to my husband and helped him crash to the door. We burst into the room and the wretched girl was trying to stuff her little dirty fist into Stephen's mouth. Wow. She turned to look at us and I screamed when her face started swirling into a million different faces. The unholy howl coming from the inside made coming from inside her made my flesh crawl, but we ran to get her to get her off of our son. As soon as we got to them, she disappeared. Stephen had been holding his teddy to his mouth and he beat his pants. We could still hear the horrifying rattling and chattering in her throat, but she was nowhere to be seen. That night, we built a bonfire and burned the beds. As we watched the flames, we heard a loud, ghastly yowl, but the jumpy-faced ghost girl haunted us no more. That's cool. I can also do, I can also do a part two, um, with like creepy stories, like creepy pasta stories and stuff like that. I never did this before, so I thought it would be really, really nice and a bit relaxing, but scary. I didn't want to scare you too much because you guys know me. If you have not seen my Halloween video that I did like two years ago, I think, or a year ago, that was one scary video, and I am not a scary person like that, but I did that whole video myself. It was me and my twin. It was literally me. People thought that it was Jamal, but it's actually me. <laughs> but besides all of that, I can get really scary, but this video, I wanted it to be a bit of a bedtime story, so... Are you okay? I hope so. The stories weren't really scary. They kind of were like, wow, you know? Maybe it's just different because I'm reading it and I'm not like in the bed. So, let me know if you like this darkness and I can do videos in the dark, you know, some hand movements, just some relaxing finger personal attention. So I have a teddy bear here, if you're kind of scared. <laughs> Look, his name is Teddy. T-Dog. His name is T-Dog. <laughs> here you go. Mm -hmm. See, everything's better. If you're scared. If you're scared. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, let's do some hand movements with the bear. 